Good morning. We're going to get ready to go ahead and start with the math. And you are going to be given um, a worksheet that looks just like what you're seeing here. And we're going to work through this. Remember, this worksheet is going to become your study guide because on Monday, you're going to be taking the post test for what we've been studying with graphing. You are not going to be working collaboratively today. You are going to be following along with the video. And when I say pause and complete the work, you are doing it individually. You are not going to be able to collaborate on the test. So I want you to try and get as deep of an understanding as you can um, through watching this video and then being able to practice and make sense out of the graphing and the directions that we're going to be following here. So let's take a look at the first graph. And I notice the writing that's added down here, and it's giving you more information. So I'm going to put N for north at the top of the y-axis. So going up in this direction, you're going north. Going down, you're going south. So I'm going to put an S down here. And you're doing the same thing on your paper. Now, if I go to the right, I'm going east. If I go to the left, I'm going west. So those are your compass directions. Now let's take a look at the first task. Zareth is going to the grocery store to get some snacks. The grocery store is located at coordinates negative five, seven. So I'm gonna find those coordinates first. I'm gonna start at the point of origin and I'm gonna to go to negative five and then I'm gonna go up to seven. So I have my point where the grocery store is. Now, it indicates that Zareth starts at the point of origin. And that point of origin is where x is 0 and y is 0. And the question is, in which direction does Zareth need to walk to get to the store? So I'm also noticing here that this is units in miles. So each of these intervals that we have here is measuring miles. So if she has to walk five miles to the west, and then she has to walk seven miles to the north. So we're going to go ahead and write this down here. Five miles. And you're writing this down on your paper west and seven miles north. That's a really long walk that Zareth has. I'm hoping she doesn't have a lot of bags that she has to carry back. And again, I know it's going to be First, going west, because I'm starting at the point of origin, and I'm going to negative 5. So each of these intervals, based on the information here, is a mile. So this 5 miles, and then going north, this 7 miles. So you should have that written on your paper. And get ready for the next task. And Keith has a dentist appointment at location negative 7, negative 2. And again, if Keith starts at the point of origin, 0, 0, what are the different ways he can walk to get to the dentist? Well, again, I'm going to graph this location. So it's negative 7, so I'm going to go west, negative 7, and I'm going to go south, negative 2. And that's what the dentist is. So I want to know what 
um, what are the different ways that he can go. And Keith can walk or he can ride or however he's getting there. Well, it says walk. So he can walk seven miles west and he can walk two miles south. So I'm going to put seven west. And on your paper, you should put seven miles west. It's a little easier if you're using pencil. It's a little more difficult if you're writing using the keyboard. Um, seven miles west and two miles south. But I'm thinking in order to get here, I could also go south two miles and west seven miles. So I could just reverse this. Instead of going west and then south, I could go south and then west. Okay. So you should have that written down. And let's get ready for the next one. And we have Nicole and Alexa are meeting their friends at the park. Nicole and Alexa are at the merry-go-round. Their friends are at the parking lot. How can their friends get to the merry-go-round? Well, first we have to find the merry-go-round. And then her friends are in the parking lot. Well, here's the parking lot. And we want to know how her friends can get to them. So Let's think about the ways that the friends could find them. And let's take a look at the coordinate points here. This is negative 5 and 2. And this is 6 and negative 6. So I want you to pause the video here. And I want you to see if you can calculate the ways or how you would give directions for their friends to find them. So pause the video here for about a minute and then check back in after that minute and we'll see how you did. Well, I'm looking at the map here, and if I am at the parking lot, I could go up, and again, we, now this does not say that each interval is a mile, so I'm going to say I could go up from where the parking lot is here to the x-axis is six units, and I could go up two more units, so for a total of eight units, and then I could go across five units. Or I could say travel north eight units or eight spaces and travel west, see where was I? I'm at six, so there's six, and five more, 11 spaces. So you could go up 
eight spaces and you could go west 11 spaces okay or I could go west and then I could go north now Joaquin and Dylan are ready to leave the park. They are at the haunted house. How far must they travel to get to the park entrance? So here's the haunted house. Here's the park entrance. So if they're at the haunted house, this is four comma one. That's the coordinate points here. So to get to the park entrance, they would have to go down four. And then I would need to go down three more so I would need to go south seven spaces and then I would go east two spaces so I'm going to go south seven spaces and I'm going to go east two spaces okay they could also go two spaces east and seven spaces south depending on if they're going this way or if they're going down and then across <clears throat> so check this against what you wrote down see how you did on that one Now, taking a look at the next one. Gage began his hike at two on the number line. So that's gonna be here. He moves two more positive movements in the morning and then seven negative movements in the afternoon. What number is Gage on at the end of the afternoon so pause the video here for about a minute and you're going to starting at gauges location figure out if you went two more positive and then seven negative where would you end up and then check back in Okay, so this is where we're starting from. I'm gonna go two to the positive, and then seven to the negative. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And where would you end up in the afternoon? Well, in the afternoon, you would be at negative three. And again, we found that by starting at two, moving two to the right, and then moving seven to the left. Okay, and we ended up at negative three. Hopefully, that's what you had on yours also. So now let's come down to this graph <clears throat> and use the graph to determine which of the following ordered pairs is in quadrant two. Well, before we start with this, pause the video here for about a minute, and I want you to label your the quadrants of your graphs and the signs of the coordinate points that will be um, plotted in each of those sections. So pause the video here and 
indicate quadrants one, two, three, four, and the sign values of the points for each quadrant. And then check back in. Okay, so I have quadrant one, and you're checking to see if yours matches this. If not, fix it. Quadrant two. Quadrant three. And quadrant four. Remember again, you're always writing the um, numbers or the numerals for the um, coordinate plane in Roman numerals. And if I'm looking at my number line, again, here's your point of origin. And moving to the right, my numbers are positive. So I know that X is going to be positive. Moving up or moving to the north, my numbers are positive. So I know that Y is going to be positive. Now, going back to the point of origin, if I'm moving to the left, my X coordinates are negative. So I know in this quadrant, X is going to be negative. And if I'm going up or I'm going north, my Y coordinates are going to be positive. So here, X is negative. Y is positive in this quadrant. When I come to quadrant three, again, I go to my point of origin and I'm looking at my X axis and I notice the numbers are negative. So I know my X coordinates are going to be negative and I'm looking at my Y um, number line and I'm noticing that the numbers are negative. So in this quadrant, quadrant three, I know that X is negative and Y is negative. So now I'm going to quadrant four. Again, I go back to my point of origin and then following the X axis, I notice all of my integers that I see here are positive. So X is positive. And looking at my Y um, axis, I notice that these numbers are all negative. So in quadrant four, my point values are positive. X is positive. Y is negative. Now that I know that, I can find only the ordered pairs that would be in quadrant two. And those would have to be positive and negative. X is positive, Y is negative. So I have X is, po X is negative. Did I say that? I think I said that wrong. X is negative, Y is positive for um, quadrant two. So this would fit in this would fit in, this would fit in. X is negative, Y is positive. This would not be in quadrant two, this would be in quadrant four. This would be in quadrant three, this would be in quadrant four, and this would be in quadrant three. So here are the three ordered pairs that you would be able to circle and you have your coordinate grid all filled in. So now, taking a look at the next one. <clears throat> Write the decimal represented by point X. So I'm looking at point X, I'm looking at zero, and how my numbers increase to the right and how they decrease to the left. So I want you to pause the video here, and I want you to see if you can calculate what these interval markers must represent. If you know that this is zero and this is one, 
What are the intervals in between? So pause the video here, see if you can calculate that, and then check back in. Okay, so now let's check and see how you did. Well, if this is zero and this is one, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. So I know that each of these interval markers is one fourth. And going in the other direction, it should be the same thing. One, two, three, four. And it is. These are going to be negative one fourth intervals. So now I'm looking at this x. Now that we know that that's one fourth intervals, determine where, what the value of x, what you think the value of x is. So pause the video here for another minute. Go ahead and write down what you think the value of x is, and then check back in in a minute and see if you're correct. Okay, so if this is zero and I'm moving to the left, and each of these interval markers is one fourth, then x is negative one fourth. Since this is negative one, I know that x has to be less than one. So now, I'm going to put some additional points here and take this out. And I want you to calculate the value of those points as well. So this is going to be a this is going to be b right here. This is going to be C. And this is going to be D. So you're finding the values of A, B, C, and D. So pause the video here and take about a minute to a minute and a half and calculate the values for A, B, C, and D. Write your answers down on the paper and then check back in to see how you did. So pause for about a minute and a half and then check back in. Okay, well again, I'm gonna start with my point of origin. And I know each of these interval markers is a quarter, one quarter or one fourth. And I know that this is negative one. So if I'm looking at A, there's negative one, negative one and one fourth, negative one and two fourths, negative one and three fourths. So negative one and three fourths for the value of A. Okay, now I'm going to look at B, and that was kind of easy. Here's zero. It's right on this line here. B is negative one. Now I'm going to look at the value of C. Well, this is, again, the point of origin. There's one-fourth, two-fourths, and it's to the right of zero, so this is a positive. Two fourths. Two fourths is not lowest terms. So you could also reduce that to one half. Doesn't say put in lowest terms, um, but you could. And D. Well, here's one. One and one fourth, one and two fourths. So D is one and two fourths, or one and one half.
if you're writing two-fourths and lowest terms. Okay? And now, what are the values for the letters A and C? A and C. Same thing, I want you to pause the document. I, I want you to pause the video here. And you need to calculate, here are your whole numbers. What are the intervals in between? What is the fractional part of each of those interval markers in between? So pause the video here. Take about a minute to a minute and a half. And then check back in and see how you did. Okay, so I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to count how many of these interval markers it takes to get to the number one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know each of these interval markers is one eighth. So if I'm looking at A, and I want to know the value for A, there's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A is 5 eighths. I know it's less than a whole number because it is to the left of 1. Now I'm going to look at C. I know that it's between the whole numbers 1 and 2. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So C is 1 and 5 eighths. Remember, you have to figure out the value for your interval markers first, and you do that by counting how many interval markers you have from 0 to the first whole number or from 1 to two, okay, how many interval markers are there? And then that is the answer that you would have. That's how much each is worth. Okay, and that is the completion of your study guide. Now you should still have a little bit of time left over. So if you have not finished your problem of the week, I want you to go ahead and finish that. If you have finished your problem of the week, there is no other homework for tonight. I want you to either look over your study guide and you might want to practice drawing the coordinate grid and labeling it, or you may read silently. Silently means you are not talking, okay? Keep in mind, I expect very good behavior from both classes. So make me proud. I know you can do it. And I will see you on Monday.